Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your Bibles, King James Bible, to the book of Genesis. And we're going to start in chapter number 49, verse 1. And Jacob called his sons, and Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. You see, Jacob had his name changed to Israel, and he had 12 sons, and there were different promises made to the different sons. Now, some people are going to try to make you think that uh, the, the people in the Middle East that have gathered in the state that they called Israel is all 12 tribes. Well, if God made different promises to the different tribes, uh, unless they fulfill all the promises, how can they be the same? I don't think they can be. Listen to this, verse 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn. Is Reuben a Jew? He was the firstborn, right? Thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defiled, defiledst thou it. He went up to my couch. See, Reuben had sex with one of Jacob Israel's women. I guess that was kind of Jacob's fault. He should have, you know, when Reuben was interested in women, he should have found him a wife. But he didn't. So Reuben did something he shouldn't have done. That's what it meant when it, when it talks about going up to your father's bed. Okay. Verse 5. Simeon, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Verse 8. Now this is very, very important. This is going to be the foundation of this study. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Hmm. What does it mean to have your hand on the neck of your enemies? Well, that means you're going to be fighting the enemies. I mean, let's face it. You got your hand around somebody's throat, but they're in trouble. It says, Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Well, who? That means that Judah is going to be the tribe of the kings. Period. And let's face it. King David and Solomon. What tribe were they of? Judah. Christ. What tribe was he of? Judah. So... Now, an interesting observation, 
is did you know that about 85 to 90 percent of all the royalty in Europe were of German extraction? Even King George I and the Second of England, did you know they were Germans? King of Denmark, Sweden, Germans. The uh, Tsar of Russia, they were all Germans. And a lot of people will deny it, but I wonder. Judah was to be the tribe of the, the, of the kings. They were supposed to be the ruling tribe. And I wonder, if you listen to Hebrew and German, and I was in Germany when I was a teen, when I was in the army, and then I've studied some Hebrew in Bible college. And I'll tell you what, it sounds, they sound, German and Hebrew sound very similar, if you ask me. And when you look at the old German script, the old way that they made letters, and then compare that to the Hebrew, looks very similar. I wonder, I wonder if, if German and Hebrew are related a lot closer than most people would think. Now, something you should know. Part of Judah was taken into captivity by the Assyrian Empire. They tried to take Jerusalem, and God stopped them. The entire army was, uh, part of it was, I, I don't remember all the specific details. Either they were destroyed or they were struck with blindness. I forget exactly. I could be mixing up two different things, but the Assyrian Empire took over a large part of Judah. And they also took over northern Israel. Now, Israel's capital was Samaria. They split. Israel and Judah split after the reign of Solomon's son because they didn't like the heavy taxation. And then Israel went into apostasy. And then the Assyrian Empire came, took northern Israel, and took them into captivity. But they also took a portion of southern Judah also, but they couldn't take Jerusalem. The Lord would not let them have Jerusalem. So part of Judah, part of the Levi, part of Benjamin, and Israel, Ephraim, Manasseh, Reuben, Iskar, uh, uh, Naphtali, and Dan went into a captivity by Assyria. Well, then later on, the Babylonians came and they conquered the Assyrians. Well, what happened to the Israelites that were living in the conquered Syrian Assyrian Empire's territory? Well, they fled. They went to the north. And according to history, archaeology, and legends, they went to the Caucasus Mountains and from there settled into Europe. Think about it, people. When Christ came and founded his church, what group of people on the face of the earth embraced Christianity? Japan? No. China? No. South America? No. Central Africa? No. Europe. Europe built all the churches. Matter of fact, who invented the printing press? A German by the name of Gutenberg, which means good mountain. What was the first book printed on the printing press? The Bible. Do you know there was a time when Germany was the most Christian country in Europe? They threw out the Pope. Or at least parts of Germany did. Under Luther. Luther said salvation by faith alone. Grace. So, 
what can I tell you? Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. It's funny how the great majority of the European kings were all of German extraction. Verse 9, here is the foundational verse of this study. Judah is a lion's whelp. A lion's whelp. Judah is compared to be a lion's whelp. Do you know the symbol of Germany? A lot of times their, their crest, their coat of arms, or what have you, oftentimes was of a lion. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Verse 9 again, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, P-R-E-Y, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter. What's the scepter? The scepter is something, it's like a staff, but it's something that signifies royalty. Okay? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now who's Shiloh? It's going to be Christ. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Christ is going to gather his children, from his elect, from one corner of the world to the other, from the east to the west and the north to the south and everything in between. Christ is going to be the one that gathers his people. Now remember, Israel, Jacob Israel said, that this is what's going to happen in the, latter, the last days. Verse 11. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass is called unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Hmm. I think we need to stop here. In Luke chapter 22, now this ties right in to what we just read. Verse 18, Jesus is getting ready to be crucified. Verse 18, Luke 22, 18. For I, Jesus speaking, for I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, the difference between a covenant and a testament is that a covenant is made when both parties are alive and is in effect. But a testament, perhaps you've heard of a last will and testament, a testament does not come into effect until after the person dies. And that's the difference. Uh, a covenant is when they're alive, and a testament becomes in, in effect when a person is no longer alive. So, we just read about how... Well, let's take a look at it again. Genesis 49.11 Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine... Now, there's a whole lot of symbolism here. Uh, didn't Jesus say, I'm the vine, ye are the branches? And 
It said the ass's colt. Didn't Christ ride in Jerusalem on an ass's colt? He sure did. And what was the choice vine? The choice vine was Israel. But he said he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. So let's take a look at that again. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So let's take a look at uh, Revelation chapter 7. You know, it's funny. In Genesis, it tells you about what's going to happen in the last days. And then Revelation will goes into more detail about what uh, Genesis was saying. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7, verse 12. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Hmm, good question, right? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes. A robe is a garment and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Didn't Jesus say that uh, this cup is, was his blood? You know, the wine? But here, they came out of great tribulation, they've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, that he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. All right, let's go back to Genesis 49, verse 11. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, not, you know, vine and wine, you know, they sound alike, but. And his clothes in the blood of grapes. So what did Jesus say in John 15 and verse 5? Jesus said, I am the vine, V-I-N-E. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Now, in Matthew chapter 21, verse, uh, let's see, let's take a look. I guess we'll start, oh, what do you think, verse 1? Yeah, we could do that. Now, this is Christ. He's getting ready to go into Jerusalem, his entry into Jerusalem. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. You know, you kind of wonder. Uh, I'm wondering who the owner of the colt and the ass were. And if the Lord or an angel, Lord gave them a dream or an angel came unto them and told them, you know, well, I'm going to ask, send some people to, to take this colt and this ass and, you know, let, let them have them. You know, you kind of wonder because, I mean, here it is. Ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. So, obviously, 
they were told ahead of time, but it's just not fulfilled in the Bible. So, All right, so the disciples go. They find the colt and the ass. They take them. Uh, let's see. So, go into the village and over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put them on them, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed Christ, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Isn't it wonderful when you see somebody with a what would Jesus do uh, bracelet, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Uh, remind them that overthrowing the tables of the money changers is well within the realm of possibility. It is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Then the chief priests and scribes, oh, by the way, these are not Catholic priests. These are the Jewish priests, the Levites, or at least those pretending to be Levites. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. Hmm. And he said unto them, and, and said unto him, so who's talking, uh, the Jews, the Jewish priests are talking to Jesus here, and said unto him, hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. So here it is, the scribes and the Pharisees, the the priests, the Pharisees, they were not happy about all this. So what can I tell you? All right, back to Genesis 49. Let's go back and read it again. Genesis 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he, he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Boy, that's going to happen when Christ returns in glory with his angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Ooh. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Remember, every knee is going to bow before Christ. Every knee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Isn't Jesus called the lion of the tribe of Judah? Oh, yeah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass is colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. All right. 
Let's go to Zebulun, verse 13. Genesis 49, verse 13. Now remember, this is all what's going to happen in the last days. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an, an haven of ships. And his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good in the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Verse 16, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path. What's an adder? A poisonous snake. An adder in the path that biteth the horse's the horse heals so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad. Now remember, there's 12 tribes of Israel. 12 of them. And they want you to think that all 12 of these tribes are Jews. I have a hard time with that. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Verse 20. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have so, so sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode, uh, but his bow, you know, bow and arrow, but his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessing of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessing of thy progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Verse 27, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them, and blessed them, every one according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephon, Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephon the Hittite for a possession for a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah's wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah's wife. And there I buried Leah purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. In other words, he died. Now, let's go back to verse 1 again. Genesis 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. So, this is telling you what's going to happen in the last days unto the tribes of Israel. Now, verse 8, being that this, this Bible study is about the lion of the tribe of Judah, let's read verse 8 again. 
Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. Judah is compared to a lion. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foal under the vine, and his ass's colt under the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his glow, clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. The first time the word lion appears in the Bible, the King James Bible, the non-Catholic Bible, is right here. We just read it. And Judah is tied in with lion. Judah is a lion's whelp. And what's Christ called? Christ is from the tribe of Judah, and he's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So that is going to set the theme for the rest of this study. All right, turn to Numbers chapter 24. Now, Balaam was a prophet who fell away. And Balak was a was a, uh, a a king of one of the I believe one of the Canaanite tribes. Now, a lot of you don't know it, or maybe some of you do. The Canaanites were often. I'm sure a lot of them were descended from the fallen angels when they intermarried with the children of Adam. You know, that's where the giants came from. When David faced Goliath, the giant, the Philistines. You know, there was a reason why God said, do not marry the Canaanites. Abraham didn't want his son to marry Isaac to marry a Canaanite. Isaac didn't want his sons to marry a Canaanite. And Jacob Israel did not marry a Canaanite, but Isaac's son Esau did marry a Canaanite. Actually, two uh, Hittite women that were descendants, one of the tribes of the Canaanites. And we're going to read about them really soon. All right, Numbers 24.1. And if you doubt what I'm saying, I've got an entire playlist on the angels that sinned Genesis 6. There's a reason why God destroyed the entire world in a flood in Noah's day. The Canaanites, the giants. I mean, you know, believers and unbelievers getting married do not have giants for children. It just doesn't happen. And that's what the modern church world has turned the Bible into a fairy tale. They want you to think that the sons of God were just good godly men and, and the daughters of men were just wicked women. So all the men were righteous and all the women were wicked. That's what the modern church world turns into today. No. In Job 38, the sons of God were shouting for joy when the earth was created. Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. Therefore, Adam, Adam was a son of God, but sons of God were the angels in Genesis 6. That's why God said, don't intermarry with the Canaanites. And of course, guess what? Judah intermarried with the Canaanites. Not all of Judah's children were Canaanite blood, but some of them were. So you've got fallen angel people that call themselves Jews. And then people fall all over themselves saying, oh, these are God's chosen people. Chosen for what is the question? 
Numbers 24, verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as to other times, to seek for enchantments, but to set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents, according to the tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Now, Balaam was actually a, he was a prophet. And the Spirit of God came unto him. But he also lusted after riches. He eventually taught Balak how to cause Israel to stumble and fall by sending Canaanite women. And unfortunately, men are very, men love beautiful women. Instead of looking upon a woman in her heart and what kind of a person she is, they look upon their backside and their long slender legs and large top-heavy, whatever, you know. I don't mean to be crude, but it's it's a fact. Let's face it. You know, modeling would not even be important to the fashion industry if men weren't so uh, visual. That's why they have women dress up in all these scantily clothes and stuff. And that's how Balaam told Balak how to cause Israel to stumble and fall. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open, how goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. As the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of line, line aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour out the, the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. And his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched. He lay down as a lion. Judah, remember? He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and curses is he that curseth thee. And that's true. Uh, do you know that to this day that there are people that call themselves Jews that curse Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah? Are they blessed or are they cursed? They call themselves Jews. In Revelation 2.9, Jesus said, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So, can these synagogue of Satan, can they curse Jesus and expect to be blessed? I don't think so. Verse 10, And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Now, uh, therefore, now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers which thou sendest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord saith, that will I speak. And now behold, I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. So here's another thing, the latter days and the last days. It means the same thing. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling in tr into a trance, but having his eyes open. 
I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. And a, Jacob's Israel. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheph. Now Moab was Lot's, one of Lot's daughter's children that evidently must have married into the Canaanites. It doesn't say who he married, but he lived among the Canaanites, and the children of Moab do not have a future. So that's my guess. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all, and destroy all the children of Sheph. Destroy all the children of Sheph? What? There's not... You know, people will tell you that this bloodline stuff with the fallen angels is not true. Well, why would the God destroy all the children of S-H-E-T-H, Sheph? Is there not one person in, of the children of Sheph that will have faith in Christ? Why are they going to destroy all the children? Why? Unless, of course, the Canaanites were the descendants of the fallen angels. Now, Esau, who was the twin brother of Jacob Israel, he also married two Hittite women who were of the Canaanites. And Edom is just another name for Esau. Verse 18. And Edom shall be a possession, and Seir, uh, Mount Seir is where Esau Edom lived. And Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall he shall come he that shall have dominion. Who's going to have dominion? Christ. And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted until Asher, Asher is one of the twelve tribes, until Asher shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. Now turn to Ezekiel chapter 1. I was going to do a commentary on the book of Ezekiel, but uh, doing research on the angelic beings, I came upon one of them has, well, th these angelic beings, beings have on part of their face the face of a lion. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. And I thought this is kind of pretty wild, really. Ezekiel is probably the wildest book in the Bible, if you ask my opinion. Ezekiel 1.1, 1, 1, Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, so Ezekiel was of the tribe of Levi. He was a priest. Unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Now remember, I mentioned that Israel was taken captive by the Assyrians. Well then, years later, the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, came. They conquered the Assyrian Empire. Israel decided they didn't want to hang around, so they took off. But then the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar, conquered Jerusalem. They conquered the part of Judah that uh, the Assyrians couldn't conquer, didn't conquer. So they took Jerusalem captive. 
And remember in Jeremiah, he said they were going to keep him for 70 years, which they did. Perhaps you've read the book of Daniel. That is giving an account of this exact same time period. So Ezekiel was a contemporary with Daniel. Okay, so the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of the amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So you've got some living creatures, probably some kind of an angel, and they're, they kind of like look like a man. I guess they got, you know, arms and legs. And I don't know. Verse 6. And everyone had four faces. Four faces. Can you imagine that? I guess they got one on the front, one on the back, one on the left, and one on the right. And everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. And they four also had the face of an eagle. So they got the face of a man, a lion on the right side, an ox on the left, and the face of an eagle. Boy, I tell you what, I saw that in the middle of the night, standing in the dark in my bedroom late at night. I'd be, I'd probably be, I'd be, I'd be wondering if I was having a flashback from acid or something, you know. Uh, I don't know. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. So, here it is, they got a face of a man, face of a lion, face of an ox, face of an eagle. And a lot of people don't know it, but these are symbols of the children of Israel. The, you know, the lion was the symbol of Judah. All right, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 22. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 2, Now thou son of man, wilt thou judge, wilt thou judge the bloody city? What's the bloody city? Jerusalem. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. That's why God allowed the Babylonians to come in and wipe out the city and take them take them captive. And not all of them were taken captive. About a third of them were killed. Then say thou, thus saith the Lord God, the city sheddeth blood in the midst of it, that her time may come and maketh idols against herself to defile, to, to defile herself. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed, and hast defiled thyself in thine idols which thou hast made, and thou hast caused thy days to draw near, and art come even unto thy years. Therefore have I made thee a reproach upon unto the heathen, and a mocking to all countries. Those that be near, and those that be far from thee, shall mock thee, which art infamous and much vexed. Behold, the princes of Israel, 
Everyone were in thee to their power to shed blood. In other words, commit murder. In thee have they set light by father and mother. In the midst of thee have they dealt by oppression with the stranger. In thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widow. Thou hast despised mine holy things and hast profaned my Sabbaths. In thee are men that carry tales to shed blood, and in thee they eat upon the mountains. In the midst of thee they commit lewdness. In thee they have discovered their father's nakedness. This has reference to um, having sex with their father's wife or girlfriend, not necessarily their mother, but could be their mother, could be. You know, it could be a stepmother. You never know. In thee they have discovered their father's nakedness. In thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. And one hath committed abomination with his neighbor's wife. Another hath lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law. You know, your son's wife, right? And another in thee hath humbled his sister, his father's daughter. In thee they have taken gifts to shed blood. They took bribes to murder people. Thou hast taken usury, interest, and increased, and thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion, and hast forgot me, saith the Lord God. Behold, therefore I have smitten thine hand at thy dishonest gain, which thou hast made, and at thy blood, which thou hast hath been in the midst of thee. Can thine heart endure, or can thine hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it, and will do it. I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries and will, cons and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. Do you know what dross is? Well, if you were a metallurgist or a silversmith, you'd know what dross is. When you're mining silver out of a mine and there's silver in the rocks, you take the rocks, you crush them up, you throw them in a, in a furnace, you melt, uh, melt the metal, and then the silver, uh, the dross will... You separate the dross, which is the uh, uh, impure metals that are not silver. So if you had nickel and, let's say, tin, copper, you would separate the copper from the silver. Well, the, the nickel and the copper would be the dross. Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead. In the midst of the furnace, they are even the dross of silver. And those of you that don't know it, God is likened unto gold, and his children are likened unto silver. And silver is a metal that reflects like a mirror. Okay, so... We're supposed to be tried as purified like silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the fire, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. 
There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion. Ooh, there's that lion again. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. These are supposed to be God's prophets, people. They've devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests, not Catholic priests, the Jewish priests, her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar. Do you know what untempered mortar is? It's like, uh, mortar is like cement or concrete. And when it's untempered, it means it doesn't set. It's, just, it's like mud. It just stays liquid. And when you put bricks upon bricks upon bricks with just mud, it doesn't become hard. And the licks are, bricks are loose. And if a strong wind hits it, the wall falls down. That's what untempered mortar is. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining, divining lies lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none. In other words, God was looking for a righteous man to stand before the Lord and said, Lord, have pity upon these, my people. But he couldn't find not one. Remember when Abraham asked the Lord if he would spare Sodom and Gomorrah for ten righteous men? And I sought for a man among them that they should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. And I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. All right, turn to uh, the book of Hosea. Chapter 5. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. Hosea is a wonderful book. It's a love story, actually. And Hosea was told to marry basically a whore. But then he goes, she runs off to be with other men, and he runs off after her to get her and to bring her back. And basically, it signifies the Lord in Israel. Believe it or not, in Jeremiah 3.8, God says he divorces Israel. Divorces her. Write her a bill of divorcement. But in Hosea, it said that he was going to remarry Israel. And I did an entire study on this. But, verse 1. Hear ye this, O priests, and hearken, ye house of Israel, and give your house of the king, for the judgment is toward you, because ye have been a snare on Mizpah, and a net spread upon Tabor. And the revolters are profound to make slaughter, though I have been a rebuker of them all. I know Ephraim, Ephraim was the uh, main tribe of Israel in the north. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, 
and Israel is defiled. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. And the pride of Israel doth best testify to his face, therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Judah also shall fall with them. See, Judah and Israel are not synonyms. They don't necessarily mean the same things. All of true Judah is of Israel, but not all Israel is of Judah. Israel was 12 tribes. Judah was only one of 12 tribes. And Ephraim is not Judah. Verse 6. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. He hath withdrawn himself from them. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. Blow ye the cornet in Gibeah, and the trumpet in Ramah, cry aloud at Beth Haven, after thee, O Benjamin. Benjamin's another tribe of Israel. Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke among the tribes of Israel. Have I made known that which shall surely be? The princes of Judah were like them that removed the bound. Therefore I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. Therefore will I be unto Ephraim as a moth and to the house of Judah as rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent to King Jerob, yet could he not heal you nor cure you of your wound. And I will be unto Ephraim as a lion. And as a young lion to the house of Judah, I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. You know, this is going to happen to Europe and the United States, what used to be Christian countries. They are going to be afflicted with the flood of the heathens coming upon them. And they're going to cry out to God because that's the only one that's going to be able to save them. It's coming. It's coming. They have no idea that God's heavy-handed judgment's coming upon them. All right, let's turn to the first book of Peter, chapter 5 and verse 1. And, uh, you know, it's uh, funny. They claim, the, the Roman Catholic Church claims that Peter was the first pope. But uh, did you know Peter was married? And yet the, the pope, uh, they, they say, nope, popes can't get married. But Peter was married. Peter had a mother-in-law, and the only way you can have a mother-in-law is if you are or were married. It's funny, Jesus also said not, not to call any man father, and it's not talking about your dad who married your mom, okay? You know, what do they call the priests? But he also said to call no man rabbi, and what do the Messianic Jews call themselves? Uh, they're they're, they're they don't call their pastors pastors. They call them rabbi, right? So there's a whole bunch of uh, false stuff to spread around. I mean, it's not confined to... Uh, and the so-called Protestants are just as bad. I mean, let's face it. And I'm sure I'm wrong on some things, too. I know I'm not perfect. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. That's right, not for filthy lucre. Lucre is money, people. Don't take blood money. But of a ready mind neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being 
and samples to the flock. See, we're supposed to lead by example. I, I'm, I'm the perfect example of a bad example. And when the chef, chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth, resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. Don't be a bunch of drunks like the world. And, you know, if a Christian ever went to a bar, it ought to be to, to preach the gospel, not to have a beer or a shot of whiskey. There's a reason they call it spirits. Yeah, they call liquor spirits. It's spirits, all right, and not the Holy Spirit. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus, uh, by Christ Jesus, after that, ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanius, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose, I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God, wherein ye stand. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are, that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 4. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. It's a short one. After this, verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And I'll guarantee that rainbow is not going to be one of those uh, lesbian bisexual, gay, transsexual rainbow thingy flags that they have hanging around. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Who are these twenty and four elders? Doesn't say. But uh, if somebody were to ask me, and I did a Bible study on this, I bet you it's the uh, 12 sons of Jacob, Israel, and the 12 apostles. Not Judas, but Paul. That's my guess. I could be wrong. I bet you I'll be right on most of them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Verse 5, And out of the throne proceedeth lightnings and thunderings of voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was like there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. There were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Remember we read in Ezekiel about the, um, the uh, living creatures? And the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Just like Ezekiel chapter 1, right? 
And the four beasts had each of them six wings, just like in Ezekiel, about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Huh. So you got these four beasts, they, they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, three times. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Why three times? You got a big attack right now saying that um, what they call the oneness people. Well, God is one. Well, yeah, that's true. God is one. But then they say if you believe in the Godhead, what some people call the Trinity, that you have three gods. Well, Father, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Now, something to think about. God said that he made man in his own image, and yet the Bible declares that man has a body, man has a soul, man has a spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Three parts make up one man. Your body's not your soul. Your body's not your spirit. Your soul is not your spirit. So, body, soul, and spirit, three parts make up one man. And God made man in his own image. And yet, they'll, Jehovah's Witnesses and Oneness Pentecostals and uh, Jews will say, ah, well, you know, Jesus Christ. Jesus can't be God because that would make two gods. And then if you believe in the so-called, what they some people say, the Trinity, well, they'll say, well, you have three gods. No. Man is a has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Three parts make one man. And right here, the Bible says, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. That'll preach. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Even Satan, Lucifer, the devil, was created for his pleasure and for his glory. Think about that. I mean, after all, the Bible says that uh, Jesus was the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, before the Lord even created the earth. A sacrifice was made for us knowing that we would fall. Think about that. All right, turn to the next chapter, Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And what book is this? I think it's the book of life. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. You see, these people that deny the tr so-called Trinity or the Godhead, what they're doing is they're denying the divinity of Christ. They're denying that Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, God in the flesh, God with us. They're denying that. 
And they will tell you, don't use the King James Bible. It has errors. Use one of the modern versions. Well, all the modern Bibles come from the Pope, the Vatican, all of them. If you're going to use a Bible, use the King James, use the Geneva, use the Webster. They're the only ones that use the Greek traditional text. And I'll tell you what, 1 Timothy 3.16, this is not in the modern Pope-approved new Bibles. Let's read 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God became flesh, people. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. See, all the difference, the difference between Christianity and all the other religions, if you're an Orthodox Christian, is that you believe that God became man, whereas all the other religions teach that man can become God. I don't think so. But in Christianity, God became man in the form of Christ Jesus. Revelation chapter 5, 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of my right hand, out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that, that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that, him that liveth forever and ever. All right, let's go and finish this up. Chap, uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and, and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Tell you what, I'd rather have his name in my forehead than the mark of the beast, 666. And there shall be no light there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign 
forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, this is Christ speaking, words of Christ in red. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of the book, of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man take away from the words of the prophecy of uh Take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Boy, I tell you what, those people that delete things from the Bible, from the words of God, that change the things, they're, they, they've just, they just took an eraser and erased their name out of the book of life. I mean, this is not a suggestion. This is a promise. You take away the words from God's word, and your name is deleted, blotted out, erased from the book of life. Verse 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.